important I have to share with you. I, I was Candy was being very good by being quiet. Some of you may have already seen it on Facebook or the or, or the YouTube. My praise report is is really tied into a lesson we did last week. The praise report. I remember you guys. We said wait on the Lord. We I was doing a, a poetic lesson about how we need to wait on the Lord. And you always hear me say wait on the Lord. I was telling Sister Marion wait on the Lord. Well, I had I had an impatient moment last week. Where and most of you know my I won my lawsuit because of my slip and fall, but the court or the the, the paperwork has held my money for for five months. I had no idea once I won the case, I was gonna have to wait over five months before my portion of the money was released. The medical people gotta get their money. The attorneys gotta get their money. I said, could you just take your money and give me my money? Why do I have to wait over five months? I had no idea. So Wednesday, the Wednesday last week, I had an impatient moment. Well, I was about to go and say, you know what? Let me just go. You know, let me just go. There's a company that will give you an advance on your settlement, and then you pay them back after you get your settlement. So I just, I, I was getting impatient. You know what? Let me just, let me just go and do that. Holy Spirit said, I was, I was almost about to sign the paper, and Holy Spirit said, read the, read the paperwork again. I said, I almost made the mistake of saying, but, but why? Never say but why when the Holy Spirit says do something i almost said but why but i read the contract again and i realized if i had signed that dotted line i would have had to pay them two almost two thousand dollars more not interest just to be able to get the money out in advance they were going to charge me two thousand dollars more just for giving me the advance and it wasn't written this is again it wasn't written anywhere in the contract what the Holy Spirit Spirit gave me this sermon was my amount being loaned and the amount to pay back was nowhere near the same amount. And I asked him, well, how does it, I asked for this amount, how come I have to start paying back that amount? And the guy said, well, that's our fee for giving you the money. I said, $2,000? A $2,000 fee? I said, well, you know what? No, thank you. No, thank you. I, You know what? I'll just push my way through. I'll just push my way through. And so... I said, you know what? Forget about it. Now, now I just said, forget about it. I just said, forget about getting in advance to help make it through this tough season, right? So I just said, okay, Lord. And I just said, the Lord will provide. So meanwhile, my, my leg is feeling better. And I said, Lord, bless my legs, Lord. Bless my legs. I feel my back is getting stronger. My, my knees feeling better. Lord, just bless me that I may be able in the month of October to get back out there and I don't know what kind of acting job, Lord, but just give me the strength to be able to make it through uh, whatever projects come my way. Now, that was that was Thursday night. Friday morning, the casting office for Fresh Off the Boat calls my agent, not for an audition, but to offer me the role that I had last year as a mailman. So I got cast without auditioning. They wanted me to come back to the same show. Last year, I was on Fresh Off the Boat playing the mailman and they called and said we like to offer a fits the job to, to play the same role it wasn't an audition i'm going what praise god thank you jesus so now i'm just praying the, the the praise report that's the praise report of how i almost rushed into a contract that would cost me two thousand dollars more just to get the money out and then the lord blessed me with an acting job there was a portion of what I was going to ask for in advance. So see, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Praise God. I was about to get myself into some serious debt. And then most of my money coming back to me would have been spent paying back the people who gave me the advance where God said, you know what? Let me just bless you with a job. They'll help hold you over until the actual money is released. And so that's why that was an example. I, I told Sister Jonna, this is the application of what I was saying last week. When you rush into something, you get blindsided. I didn't even see the $2,000 fee. It wasn't written anywhere on the contract. But when the Holy Spirit gave me discernment to ask the man, how come these two totals are different? That's the only way I found out there was a hidden $2,000 fee if I had taken that money out. That's how we may, That's why we have to stand still before any decision, before any sign of any contract, before you move to another city, before you go into a relationship, before you get married, you always gotta stand still for discernment because God gives each one of us a spirit of discernment. Every one of us have a spirit of discernment, but we all have to make sure 
that we stand still before we make any major decision. Holy Spirit is going to always tell us, but we have to stand still in order to hear the Holy Spirit's advice whether to move on that situation or not. And so that's why God is so good. Amen, Tammy. I said, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So that's the, I was telling Candy, a lot of people think the testimony was just getting the job. I said, no, the testimony started when I turned down that loan and God blessed me with a job saying, I'm not going to put you in debt. I'm going to let you, my, your head not to tell. Let me, let me take over. Let me move. You just hold your peace. And so I was glad to be able to share this with you because that was a direct application of God will provide and you shall hold your peace. Because when I turned it down, I said, Lord, I don't see I don't see the way. <laughs> so, but, God, but, but, but Sister John and I prayed together. God's got this. God's got this. And praise God. That's the application of how we just hold on. We trust the Lord. Lean not to our own understanding. Lean not to our own. Amen. First Lady John, welcome. I was just sharing the testimony. You probably heard it. And, and so that's, that's the testimony now. And the other blessing is that it doesn't shoot until next week, which gives me a whole week to work specifically on exercises to walk better because I had just come off the cane last week. I, mean, I kind of walk kind of labored, but I had just said, praise God, I'm able to get off the cane and the mailman has to walk. I'm going like, praise God. So I, I, so all this is all tied together of how God looks after all of us for whatever it is we're praying for, whether it's an emergency, we don't ever rush and we don't time God asking when God's going to do it. God knows exactly when we need it and God's always what? right on time amen praise god so i just had to share i went away to now to share with it share that with you so everybody was here to share that testimony now today's today's topic today today's topic is really interesting brother greg and i greg foster last a uh, few days ago when i was talking about uh how how we must go to a quiet place or go to a happy place i'll tell you about a friend of mine whenever he gets stressed out I was telling whenever he gets stressed out, he would go to his happy place. For him, he would tell the kids in the classroom, quiet for a minute. And he would lift up his calendar, and there would be this pretty picture where he would look at his happy place on the wall. Then there's a movie called Collateral where Jamie Foxx is a, is a cab driver. And he tells the passenger, well, I'll go, I'll go on my vacation every day. And the passenger says, you cab driver, how can you go on a vacation every day? So he pulls down his sun visor. And there's a picture of a Hawaiian island. He said, this is my vacation. So when he pulls his visor down every day, he said, this is my vacation. That's how I go on vacation every day. I look at that island and I leave the cab and I go to a happy place, to a peaceful place. So Brother Greg said, you should make that a topic. As soon as he said, how do you find your happy place? I think was the question Brother Greg asked me. As soon as he said that, Holy Spirit said, that's a lesson because great brother Greg said that should be a lesson how to find your happy place well let me tell you something we understand that what we just did stillness is part of our peaceful place our stillness happy happiness basically means I'm so happy I'm not thinking about the things in this world I'm not thinking about problems I'm not thinking about stress I'm not thinking about anxiety when you go to your happy place which is also a peaceful place that means we're not thinking about a single thing in this world at the t on, uh, during the time we're in our happy place or our peaceful place. We're not thinking about a single care because we know that God's got this. And the reason we go into God's presence every day is to not let the world attack us and bring us down into heaviness and the depression and loneliness and all the negative spirits. That's why we go into stillness every day. Some of you might be so busy with your day outside of fellowship that you may never take the time to be still. So Holy Spirit said, put stillness in your fellowship every day for those of you who have trouble in your schedule standing still for just six minutes. Not let alone an hour, six minutes. You really only need six minutes, like I tell you many times. If you're at work and you're stressed out, all you need to do is go to the restroom, close the stall, close your eyes, Thank you, Jesus. I need peace right now. I need peace right now. In Jesus' name, I need peace. And God's presence will instantly drop on you. God's presence, as I say all the time, God's presence is always around us. He never leaves us. We are the ones who stay so busy, we don't take advantage of his presence enough. 
And that's why we get stressed out. That's why we get anxiety attacks, insomnia, stress-induced high blood pressure. All that's because we don't take enough time in the presence of the Lord to stand still, to keep the overwhelm at bay, to keep the stress out, whatever's trying to attack our, our peace of mind. Nothing, nothing in this world we should let take our peace of mind. Nothing is more important than peace of mind. Because when you got your peace of mind, then that's when the joy of the Lord comes in. Because when you're stressed out, you got no peace, you got no joy, you got no joy, there goes your faith because you're worried about if you're gonna make it, there goes your faith, there goes your hope that you'll ever get anything better in life. See, they're all tied together, but it starts with peace of mind. So the way the Holy Spirit gave me this lesson, when I say go into stillness, what do you think about? Now I got, I got, <laughs> I got 10 things again. Holy Spirit keeps giving me things in groups of 10. 10 scriptures. That actually tell us what we should be doing, how we should be thinking, and where our spiritual presence should be when we're in stillness. If you go into stillness and the whole time in stillness, you're thinking about the, the bill you got to pay or what you got to do later, you're not being still. When I say stand still in the presence of the Lord, you're not thinking about a single thing in this world but the goodness, grace, and mercy of God who's going to be with you every step of every situation you're going through. That's all you're thinking about in stillness. That's where peace beyond understanding is. That's what it means to have peace beyond understanding. You're so peaceful. You got all this stuff going on in your life. You got adversity. You got trauma. You got trials, court dates, divorce. I mean, you got all this stuff going on in your life. But in stillness, you can't even understand, how can I be in such peace with all that I've got going on in my life? That's what peace beyond understanding is. You're so peaceful in the midst of adversity, it's beyond understanding. Your friends may say, how can you be so relaxed? How can you be so peaceful with all that you've got going through in your life? I got the peace of the Lord. That's what's going on in my life. I got the peace of God. That's what's keeping me sane. That's keeping me from being depressed. That's keeping me from being ballistic, going to work and shooting somebody. Because no matter what I'm going through, the peace beyond understanding holds us right there. Amen, Lord. Capture every thought, every negative thought that comes into your spirit. Cast it out. Cast it out the second you feel heaviness, the second you feel loneliness, the second you feel depression. Don't let it land on you. Remember, you feel depression coming on. You feel loneliness. You feel it coming. You feel the heaviness coming. You got to cast it out before it takes root. Once it takes root in your spirit, now you got to fast and pray to get that off of you because now the heaviness is on you. But as soon as you feel yourself getting down, start praising God. Start reading scriptures. Start praying shop music. Whatever it is, keep the heaviness away from you because once it's on you, you got to do more. You got to fast and pray to get it off you. Amen. Now, of course, the, 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 the text for today is two of my favorite scriptures. I'm, many of you like it as well. But the, the title is Qualities of Your Happy Place. Qualities uh, in Your Happy Place. Now, when you're in your, in your happy place or your peaceful place where we just stood still, when you stand still. Now, I'm going to ask you right now before I start the lesson. This is for you guys to type on the screen who are typing. When you went into stillness, type to me the different things that came to your mind while for six minutes you were standing still with the Lord. Night, night, take, take it on, type it down. Type what you were thinking about. Type what you were thinking about during stillness, beginning right now. Uh, qualities of your happy place. Okay, right now, type what you were thinking about for six minutes in the presence of the Lord. I want to just see what you do. And then I'll read what the Bible says we should be thinking about what we should be doing. Uh, Sticker Pot says, giving thanks. Candy, peaceful thoughts. Sheila, peace. Amen. Peace. Did anybody Did anybody see a place? There it goes, uh, uh, Jonna. Uh, a beach at 6 a.m. Amen. Tammy Rosa. Thank you, Jesus. Giving, God, giving Jesus thanks. Amen, Tammy. Uh, Isaiah, tell me if you saw anything. Did you see a peaceful place when you were at peace? Uh, Sophia, peace is coming to our Father. And so, Sophia, peace, thoughts of peace. Amen. Amen. Anybody? Yep. Yeah, this is for everybody. Uh, I stick about. I thought of my problems, but but prayed for supernatural healing. So you you saw your problem being released. Amen. I stick about victory. Kazian, visualized answered prayers. Amen. That's right. As present, uh, Pastor Ann, meditating on his goodness. Greg Foster, prayers ascending. Amen. Tammy, peace again. Diana, healing. 
sweet to me husband i came in angry but, but but what you do what you do uh, sweet to me is you still see you see it healed no don't that's a that's a life of the pit of hell sweet to me you see peace no matter what he's doing walk by faith not by sight you're not seeing what he's doing you're seeing him delivered that's what you see sweet to me amen no matter what he does keep praying sweet to me uh still uh, stick about that's what you <laughs> that's what you tried for that's, that's all right stick about that's what you shoot for nelia seeing uh oh come here <clears throat> nelia seeing yourself being loved by god cherry felt the peace of the lord and visualizing answered prayers uh kathleen felt love amen love brother greg foster love see the, okay <clears throat> those are good examples that's exactly in line with what you should be focusing on if like stick about first came in she almost thought about the negativity but then she saw the negativity being delivered from it so that the devil tried to put negativity uh, into her, her spirit as she was talking about or thinking about it but then it turned into victory over the adversity so that is okay because you're seeing your prayers answered that's what visualizing is you're seeing your miracle come to pass you're seeing your healing come to pass your deliverance your reconciliation of your marriage that's why i was telling sweets for me no matter what your marriage is going through you keep praying for it because even though it looks like it's not working you keep praying for it to see the victory over it uh, lorraine hard to see peace when you're going through amen lorraine and that's why we go into stillness when you're going through it, that's exact, Lorraine, I'm glad you said it, Lorraine, South Africa, welcome. The, the reason you go into stillness when you're going through it, that's the most important time to go through it. Because when you go into stillness, into your happy place, you're giving that thing that's trying to pull your peace to the Lord. And that's what you, if nothing else, for the whole six minutes, or whatever length of time you're in peace, the whole time you say, thank you, Jesus, for my victory. Thank you for deliverance, Lord. Thank you for peace. Thank you for deliverance. If that's all you're saying for six minutes, that's refusing to let the problem come into your into your peaceful time. See, the devil will try to come with you into your peace. And you're, uh, no way. You know, you better go way, way, way in this window. Go way, way, way in my window. You're not getting anything. To, you're not coming to my peaceful place. So, devil, you are evicted out of my peaceful mind. This is me and the Lord. Nobody else. And you out of here. So that's what we got to make sure. And that's why the Holy Spirit let me bring this topic. When we go into our quiet place, our peaceful place, don't take the world with you. The, the quiet place is only for you and the Lord and to give him whatever it is you are fighting. It's a lot of people, and I get that, I guess the Holy Spirit, thank you, Pastor Ann. I think the I think the reason the Holy Spirit gave me this lesson is closing your eyes is not stillness. If you're closing your eyes for six minutes, and for six minutes you're thinking about the next thing you gotta do, or how what am I gonna how am I gonna pay that bill, or how I'm gonna get this new job, or is, is my life over, is my marriage over? If you're thinking about that, your eyes are closed. But you're not being still. Being still means I've just given every single thing to the Lord. And it's not going to bother me for six minutes. Because for six minutes, I'm giving every single problem to the Lord. Because what? He shall supply all my need. Every problem to every need. I walk by faith, not by sight. I'm not looking at problems. I'm looking at the Lord. He's the way maker. That's why I said earlier, he's a burden remover, the yoke destroyer, the way maker, the miracle worker, the great physician, the mountain mover, the door opener, and the strong tower. I always say strong tower because the strong tower is what we're holding on to to make sure all that other negative stuff doesn't pull us away from the Lord. He's immovable unshakable faith that's what you do you hold on to god's unchanging hand so no matter what you're being hit with no matter what it looks like you're not going to let go of god's hand you, you, uh, there's a visual i saw uh, last week or a couple of weeks ago on facebook where a guy was drowning and this visual was so great the guy was drowning and jesus was in the boat reaching down to grab him to save him from drowning and that's kind of what it feels like sometimes we're going through so many heavy problems we feel like we're drowning in life we're drowning i don't know how i'm gonna make it through this i don't know how i'm gonna make it i don't know how i'm gonna make it when you go into i don't know how i can make it that means you're not looking at god god is the one who delivers you if you go into i don't know how i can make it you're acting like god can't deliver you 
you know how you're going to make it. I'm going to hold on to God's unchanging hand. That's how I'm going to make it. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you even to the end of the age. Either we believe his word or we don't believe his word. If you don't believe his word, you will drown. Because what? You've got to believe he's a rewarder to those who seek his face. Must believe that he is. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. That he is, we must, those who come to him must believe that he is, that he is all that he says he is. And that's way, whatever it is you're praying for. Amen, Marion, matchmaker, whatever it is, whatever it is, you must believe that he is the answer to whatever you're praying for. And that he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him, seek his face every day. And if you're seeking his face every day, that's how he moves. And that's why I guess he gave me the testimony to share with me because I almost got into panic mode trying to take that loan out because I wasn't seeing another way while waiting on this whole thing to be solved. I, I was That was my solution to get a loan. God said, wait a minute, either I'm your provider or if you go get a loan, you're making man your provider, which is going to put you in debt. If you let me provide for you, are you going to trust man? Is man going to be your provider and then you're going to be in debt for the rest of your life? Or are you going to let me be your provider and give you supernatural provision that's going to not put you in debt and give you a solution and a way out of no way when you think there's no way out? And that's why we always hold on. Amen. Now, of course, my first two verses, the text for the day, Psalm 23. The first part of Psalm 23 and Psalm 91. Let's go look first. Let's look first at Psalm 91. Excuse me, Psalm 91, 1. I always say this. He who dwells, I almost know by memory. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, though just the wording of that right there, I don't even know what God's secret place looks like, but just think about the imagination. The magnitude of God, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Just think about automatically if you're dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, you you're above just like an eagle. Like I saw a visual the other day, an eagle doesn't fly through a storm; he flies over the storm, and that's what we are when we're dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. We're abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, whatever visual, I don't know about you. But when I read just that first verse, a sense of peace comes over me because not even knowing what the secret place of God looks like, just knowing I'm in his secret place, knowing that a peace comes over me already, and then knowing I'm under his shadow, you don't feel the shadow of anything unless you're close to it. So that means to feel God's shadow, that means we're close enough to God to be under his shadow. And that comes, good morning, Todd, that comes by, by making sure that we're under his shadow by being as close to God every day. We seek his face every day. We give all our problems, all of our prayer requests. We give to him every day because that's, he is my fortress, and my, my uh, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in what? In whom I trust, in whom I trust. If you don't trust God, you're not even going to see the secret place because you don't believe the shadow of the Almighty because you're not believing God is who he is. See, trust him, trusting him is the number one thing that's the key to everything we're talking about. If you don't trust the Lord, you don't trust that there's going to be peace in his secret place. You may not even trust there's a protection of Psalm 91 protection under his shadow because your trust is true. Trusting he's going to be with us every single day to be able to make it through every single storm. Amen. Now, so that's the first first one. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. Abide means what? I live under the shadow of the Almighty. So I used to make a joke. If you're looking for me, what, I'll be under the shadow of the Almighty. No, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be at home. I'm going to be under the shadow of the Almighty. If you're looking for fits, yeah, I'm under the shadow of the Almighty. Call me. I talk to you. See you at lunch. <laughs> no, no, no. We live. That means when we're not doing our work, we're our presence. Our presence is always under the shadow of the Almighty. We're staying next to the Lord, especially when you're going through it. Whenever you're going through it, you're, you're, the devil's lying to your health. You don't feel like you're getting well. You feel like your finances are falling apart. You feel like all this attack. The devil's whispering in our ear every single day day that's why we've got to that's why we got to feed the faith the faith is a gift that we all have and we got to feed the faith because and like the word says 
to everyone that is given a measure of faith. A measure of faith means everybody doesn't have the same level of faith, which means we got to what? Walk by faith, not by sight. Faith comes by what? Hearing. And not by, and, we're, and those come, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more you hear the word of God, the more faith you get. The less word of God you hear, the weaker your faith gets. So if you're not feeding your faith, the world gets stronger. But if you're feeding your faith, the world gets weaker. We're in control of how much faith are we, are we feeding our faith. If you keep looking at the world, your faith will always get weaker because you're giving the world power over you, thinking whatever you're praying for is not going to come to pass. But when you keep holding on to the faith, you never let go of God's hand, no matter what it looks like, no matter how long it takes, you keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. Amen, Tammy? He'll never leave us, nor forsake us. I'll be with you even to the end of the age. The other verse, of course, our favorite one, Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Now we 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 we've heard this forever. I'm going to just the first uh, the first few verses. The visual now the the Bible gives us visuals. The the Bible Psalm 23. We we we've learned this since we were being the kids. But I want to just focus on verses one through three. Psalms 23, verses one, two, and three. Now this is where the Word is giving us a particular visual for not going to stress. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, wait, stop right there. I want you to just picture, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, you hear me say this all the time. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, which means I shall not want for anything when the, when the Lord is my shepherd. Now, can you picture that? I want you to just picture that there's nothing you want. Think about all the things you say, man, I'm praying for this, I need this, I need that. But think, when the Lord is your shepherd, I shall not want for anything when the Lord is my shepherd. I won't need provision. I won't need healing. I won't need, need deliverance because the Lord is my shepherd. Now, next thing. He makes me. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Now, that's a visual right there. He what? He makes me lie down in green pastures. Now, green pastures automatically is a relaxing visual. Then what? He leads me beside quiet waters. Quiet waters. The ocean, very peaceful. A stream, very peaceful. He didn't say he leaves me behind. He leaves me beside raging waters. He doesn't. He didn't leave me beside uh, a huge tsunami. <laughs> a tsunami and raging waters is not peaceful. He leaves me beside quiet waters. That's another visual. Picture yourself sitting next to the stream and just the, the sound of the stream puts you at peace. You're looking at a beautiful meadow, just a, like we watch the sunrise, the sunset, the ocean, nature. All these things are calming. Amen. Amen, Brian. Amen. That's why, man, when you go to, on your vacations, Marion, you always say, I can't wait to see a, a whale. Just the ocean. The ocean's rhythm has peace. That's why I did that one video where I just filmed the ocean for an hour. For those that don't know about it, it's one of my. It's actually called uh, uh, "God's Peace on the Ocean Waves," and I did. I just, I just recorded the ocean for one hour, and when you go through it, uh, that all you're hearing is the ocean. And see, all these are different visuals that are already here in nature. God puts in a place to find peace, even if you don't know what to think about. Think about the ocean, a beautiful scene. Amen. Now, those are the two texts. Now, the ten things. The 10 things the Holy Spirit gave me as far as that's that's the scriptures giving us a visual. Now, all of you mentioned a visual when we first started talking. Some saw peace. Some saw love. Some saw answers to prayers. Now, the, the number one, the number one quality, of course, your your happy place or your peaceful place. Number one should be a place of perfect peace. Don't picture yourself in the middle of traffic <laughs> as your peaceful place. You go ballistic and have a heart attack. No, traffic is not your peaceful place. So if you pick, uh, that's why I, I'm making a joke about that. But your place, number one rule, your place that you're picturing should be a, peace, a peaceful place, a visual, whatever it is. And sometimes, like you said, you just picture love. You just picture, you don't even see anything. All you picture is feeling peace. And that's okay. You may not visually see something, but it, that's a place you go and all you feel is peace. That's number one. you got to go in that. If your place does not have peace, the other nine things I'm going to say will not work because if your place that you select 
is not filled with peace, nothing else is going to happen because you're going to be distracted by the world. So your place needs to be so peaceful that whenever you think about it, whenever you look at it, if it's a picture, if it's in your mind, it's a picture. Whenever you go to this place, peace automatically drops on you because that's your peaceful place. That's your secret place in the most high, whatever that is. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and Marion, that's when I go ballistic. When the traffic's not moving, yeah, when the traffic's standing still, that's when I really have to start praising God and, and put a shout tape on because I'm about to go crazy going one mile an hour. Amen. Now, so the scripture for number one, you hear me say it all the time, Isaiah 26, 3. In your peaceful place, thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. In, in your perfect peaceful place, like I said earlier, your mind is only on the Lord, his goodness, his grace, his mercy, his power, his deliverance, his, the victory he's given you over the situation. Thou shalt keep it in perfect peace whose mind is standing. That's got to be part of your perfect place. And also John, uh, uh, John 14, 27. Both of these go together. Isaiah 26, 3. John 14, 27. And John 14, 27 reads, The peace I leave with you my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Now notice this, peace I leave with you. Now, peace we think about, peace I leave with you. But then he says, my peace, not our peace, God's peace, my peace I give you, which means that's the peace beyond understanding. We have peace that's being distorted by the world. But when God gives us peace, there is no disturbance. Nothing in this world can rock the peace of God. But if we take our mind off the Lord, that's when we lose our peace. That's why it says, Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. Do not let anything in this world take your peace. Amen. Number two. Number two. Let the peace, let the peace of Christ rule. Once you're in this quiet place, you got your mind focused on the Lord and lead Jesus Christ. Number two, let the peace of Christ rule during the time you're in God's presence. And that's Colossians 3.15. That's what I'm saying. You're not thinking about a single thing. That's when you come out of that peace. When you come out of peace like that, you're going to feel so refreshed. You'll feel like you took a nine-hour nap in, in six minutes because when we truly are at peace, we feel a weight lift off of us. Let the peace of Christ rule. Colossians 3.15 Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body, you are called to peace and be thankful. Let the peace of God rule. See, we weren't created to be in stress. We weren't created to be having insomnia and high blood pressure and heart attacks caused by the chaos of this world. But if we look at the world, all of that's going to come because the world is chaos, insanity, violence, blasphemy. Everything that's not God is in the world. And that's why Jesus said, we're in the world, but we are not of the world. And if the world hates you, remember, the world hated him first. And if we're followers of Christ, the world going to hate us too. Just as we say, praise God. That's why I have so many trollers I have to delete or I have to have to ban people from channel channel because they're here to try to distract our peace of mind. And that's the devil's that's the devil's job. Don't get mad. That's the devil's job trying to steal our peace. So Colossians 3.15. Number three, make every effort. Number three, make every effort to live in peace. Now, this is where the challenge comes. Make every effort to live in peace. When you're at work, <laughs> and we pray for this all the time, there are some people at work, people at school, friends, family, who know how to hit your last nerve in seconds. Now, when you know you're about to go into the presence of somebody who can steal your joy in seconds, you don't walk in there pray. You don't walk in there not prayed up. When you're in the car... Before you come in that person's presence, you pray up like never before, before you go into that person's presence, because you know that person has a way of finding your last nerve and stealing your joy in seconds. So when you know, okay, 
Lord, give me patience. Lord, give me strength. I'm about to run into you know who. Lord, give me strength. Don't let me lose it. Don't let me say something. Don't let me lose my peace of mind. Lord, give me supernatural strength to make it through these next few hours to be at peace in Jesus' name. You got to say that. You got to say that. So make every effort. Like it says, let the peace of God rule. Uh -huh. And, and, and that, that's why we got to let the peace of God rule. Let the peace of God rule. Amen. Which lives. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. That's not my no, 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 no. Make every effort to live in peace. That's Hebrews 12, 14. Hebrews 12, 14. Every effort to live in peace. And that's actually what Hebrews 12, 14 is. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy without holiness. No one will see the Lord. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. So when you come out of peace, somebody says something to you. And like I said earlier, a friend of mine, he says this, he says this statement. Every time somebody gets him upset, he says, look, just because I got my robe on, don't think I got my street clothes on under it. Because if you push me to a point, I'm going to take off my robe. Which, <laughs> Of course, I try to tell him, no, no, don't take your robe off. Because that means if they make you take your robe off, you just dropped to their level in the world. And now you're going tit for tat. And now they've stolen your joy. If somebody steals your joy to the fact when you take your robe off, that just means I'm no longer walking in the world, uh, in the word. I'm walking in the world and I'm ready to knock you out because now you made me mad. No, no, that's not letting the peace of God rule. That's not letting the peace of God rule. Somebody says something to you, you got to respond in a way that's still at peace for you. And that keeps, that keeps adversity from happening. Hey, Mike, Mike, that keeps adversity at bay because when you say ha, back, so when you say something back, when you say something back and you've taken your robe off, you usually say something back to hurt them back. That's like, amen, Tanya. That's flesh versus flesh. No, no, you stay in the spirit because it takes two to argue. And if you jump back into the world, that argument can turn into a fight. If you stay in the spirit, it can stay a discussion and you can bring resolution if one of you is speaking from the spirit. If both people are coming from the fleshly point of view, the argument will escalate and normally turn into a fight because that's flesh speaking from the flesh versus flesh, not flesh versus spirit. Amen. So let the devil uh, make it written out. That's number three. Number four, when we go, when we go into the, the peace, peaceful place, number four is seek peace. That's the reason. Number four is seek peace. The reason we're going into the quiet place, the reason we're going into the quiet place is we're seeking peace in the midst of adversity. In the midst of adversity, and we know we're about to lose it, that's why I said, be ready to close your eyes and say, thank you, Jesus. I need you right now, Lord. I need you, Lord. Give me peace right now. Calm my spirit, Lord. Don't get, remove the anger right now, Lord. Remove the anger in Jesus' name. So you got to say that. When, when you, remember our, our parents used to always say, think before you speak. In this case, pray before you speak. Because when somebody says something that wants to steal your joy, they're trying to take your peace. So you pray before you say something back. Lord, guide my words. Lord, guide my words. Let me say the right thing. Let me say the right thing. Speak through me, Lord. Speak to me, Lord. In Jesus' name. Now you're saying that to yourself before you respond and let the Holy Spirit make the right response. Amen. Quiet place to pray. Amen. Seek peace. Seek peace. Where it's quiet, and sometimes, sometimes I have many people say, "Well, I got all these kids; they drive me crazy. I ain't got no peaceful place. I got five kids, and they screaming." I say, "Look, you tell those kids to sit down in front of the you. It's time for you to take some authority. First of all, excuse me. I need you guys to be quiet. Watch TV. I need some peace. I need some peace right now. I need to see what now. No, they watch TV, and, and, and when you say it, kids know when you're serious. Don't be saying, oh, could you please sit down, be quiet.' No, excuse me. I need some peace of mind. Quiet." I need some peace. You take your peace. Now you might not. <laughs> you might have to go to the bathroom to get it, but get peace. Even if it's a few minutes, all you need. Remember, it's a privilege to have six minutes. It's a privilege to have an hour of God's peace. But all you really need is a couple of minutes because once you close your eyes, thank you, Jesus. Let your peace be our understanding. Fill me right now. Fill me with your peace, Lord. Calm my spirit, Lord. Take the stress, Lord. Take the anxiety. Take the frustration, Lord. Remove it right now in Jesus' name.
name. That's what you're saying those few minutes. You're saying, take this, Lord. I, I'm seeking peace, Lord. I'm seeking peace. You got to be seeking peace to, to able to enjoy the peace. Amen. Now, that's First Peter. Now, stay. We, the next two are First Peter 3. Look at First Peter 3.11. First Peter 3.11. This goes with seek peace. Now, verse 11 reads, They must turn from evil to do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. You must see, you must seek peace and pursue it. When somebody's trying to steal your peace, you 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 you're in the flesh saying, Lord, give me some peace. Lord, where's some peace? I need to find some peace. Because I'm about, I'm about to knock somebody out. Lord, show me a peaceful place. Lord, Lord, give me some peace. This person that says something, I'm about to step out of my spirit and back in the world and knock somebody out. Lord, give me peace. For, where is it? Peace, peace. Let me get out of this person's presence. If you have to walk away, you go to the store, you walk down the street, seek peace. Don't sit there and be in front of the person. Don't be in front of the person who's stealing your peace and think you're going to find peace as the peace stealer is right in your face. You never find peace. You're talking to the person who's stealing your peace and you think you can step into peace when they're stealing your peace? No, get out of their presence. Excuse me. You know what? I'm through. I'm, I'm through talking to you. Walk away. Walk away. I need to get out of this. You, 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 you're stealing my peace. I need to go away. Go way, way, way my window. That's why I say go way, way, way my window. I need some peace. And you're not giving it to me. So I need to be out of your presence because you're stealing my peace right now. If I lose my peace, you're going to be in trouble. Lord, give me peace. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Give me some peace. Thank you, Lord. Ah, yeah, yeah, you're out of their presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Give me peace, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And just go and thank you, Jesus, for about a minute. I guarantee you, if you say thank you, Jesus, a minute... You'll feel a peace in just one minute saying, thank you, Jesus. You'll feel the peace of God come over you. That's seeking peace. That's pursuing peace because you are just about to lose it. You're seeking peace. Amen. Now, number five goes along with that. Once you seek peace, number, number five, in the same scripture, let, let no one steal your peace. Number five. Let no one steal your peace. Four was seek peace. Number, number five is let no one steal your peace. See, like I said earlier, many times we know when we're about to go into someone's presence and they're going to steal our peace because they just know how to get our last nerve. So, so we got to make sure that we know we're about to come into the presence of a person who will steal our peace. So if I know I'm about to come into somebody's presence who pushes my last nerve, that's the application of 1 Peter. Now, with the same, same verse, 1 Peter 3, just look up two verses. 1 Peter 3, verses 9 and 10. Same, same three verses. I just started verse 11. 1 Peter 3, verses 9 and 10. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with with insult on the contrary repay evil with blessing because to, to because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing verse 10 for whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech now that's powerful right there look at verse 10 for whoever would lo love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech which means like i said earlier when you go in for, when you step out of the spirit and go tit for tat what did it just say you just stepped out of your <laughs> out of your good days and that's what's going to keep you from what the first uh, verse nine because of this you are called so that you may inherit a blessing by staying at peace you're letting God shine through you. And a lot of people who are watching you, you may have coworkers watching you in this encounter. And they'll come after you get through with it. They'll come to you and say, how did you not go off? How come you didn't go ballistic? That person was misusing you. That person was disrespecting you. How come you didn't lose it? Hey, I got the peace of God in me. God's going to take care of this. God's going to take care of this. He, he ain't going to steal my joy. God's going to take care of this. See, that's why you got to go. Because, you know, th that person is sent by the devil 
to steal your joy. Don't think it's an accident. You come in praising God. You're real happy. You say, praise God, everybody. God bless you. And here comes this person saying something to you. They hit you right between the eyes. And you ready, what? What would you just say to me? Excuse me? They can't, they're, 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 they're peace stealers. They're sent by the devil to steal your joy. You come in praising God, happy about life. You just came from fellowship. You're on fire for the Lord. And the devil sends somebody to come into your presence to knock that smile off your face, to knock that praise out your existence. Oh, no. You know what? <laughs> Get deep behind me, Satan. Go way, way, way my window. You ain't stealing this joy. Yeah, I, I start going dun, 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 dun. in your face, devil. I tell them in your face, devil. You talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to the devil that's talking through you. If I have to say that, I'll say it to I'll say it right to their face if I have to. Because you're not stealing this joy. So you might as well go way, way my window. Go way, way, way my presence. Because you ain't getting nothing here. I got the peace of God and you ain't gonna get none of it. Amen. Excuse my French. Amen. Whew. Excuse me. I lost a little bit. Stay calm. <laughs> amen. Amen. That's right, Linda. People know, amen, Marion. People in sheep's wool, they'll smile in your face and they're seeking to steal your joy just by being in your presence. Come in your presence to steal your joy. Act like your friends, then backstab you. Lie behind your back, smile in your face. Backstabbers, uh, uh, we call those house enemies. People who act like your friends and they could care less about your vision, your goals. They're there to destroy your goals. That's a house enemy. They're acting like your friends only so they can destroy what you're working on. They're acting, that's why we gotta make sure anybody we know like that, we keep them right next to us. How do you say? I keep my enemies close to me because I know where they're coming from. I know what they're trying to do. And I'm watching them every step of the way because until God removes them from my presence, I'm going to be watching every single thing. Amen, Sheila. The presence of God brings peace. And he gives us the spirit of discernment to see those people who are like that. Amen. Number six. We know this one too. Number six. Cast all anxiety on the Lord. Cast all anxiety on the Lord. That's what we're doing. In our peaceful place. Remember, we're not thinking about anything in this world. First Peter 5, 7. We've heard it all the time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. He cares for you. Cast all your anxiety on him for he cares for you. That's why we've been getting hot in here. See, that's why we're that's why we're casting the care. We're not holding on to it. We're not holding on to the anxiety. We're giving it to the Lord. That's why we say during the song, Lord, we're putting it on the altar and we're letting it go. We're not going to try to figure it out. We can't do this by ourselves. We need the Lord to help us make it through every situation, no matter what we're dealing with. Let the Lord help us through every situation. Don't give some things to the Lord. Give everything to the Lord because he's right there with us. So if he's right there with us, you might as well say, Lord, I need you here. I need you there. I need you for everything, Lord. I want to walk with Jesus all day long. He's walking with us all day long. I want to be with you all day long. I want to talk with you all, all day long. That means I need your presence all day long to live this life because this world is battering my spirit all day long. That's why we want to walk with Jesus all day long. And that comes from, um, there's, uh, of course, the, the scripture for that is, uh, uh, where is it, number, uh, for, uh, Philippians 4, 7. Uh, that, was the Philipp, uh, that was 1 Peter 5, 7. 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Amen. The number eight, number eight, focus on God's love. God is love. We focus on God's love. That's part of that secret place. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. We know God is love. So automatically, automatically, we're focusing on God's love. We're going to that peaceful place because God is love. So automatically, I don't know what else is there, but I know if I'm focusing, uh, uh, he who dwells, dwells me. what? You're always there. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. One thing I know for sure, if I'm dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, I'm focused and fixed on God's love. My mind is stayed on him because that's where I live. I'm there every single day. You're not going to have to look for me. I'm in the secret place of the most high every single day under the shadow of the almighty. Now, the verse that goes with that is Isaiah 5410. Isaiah. Oh, I've skipped seven. I'm sorry. Oh, so thank you. Seven was, uh, seven was guard your heart and mind. Number seven. I'm sorry. Number seven guard your heart and mind guard your heart and mind that's philippians 4 7. philippians 4 7 number seven guard your heart and mind 54 10 was uh number eight so 54 10 was number eight john sorry for the confusion 
Number seven is fifth, uh, Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God, the peace of God, which transcends, that's the, that's the peace beyond understanding. That's the peace beyond understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's why we're guarding. See, all the things we said earlier, if you're guarding your heart and your mind, again, if you know you're about to go into a stressful situation, a stressful person, a stressful job, a family member, whatever it is, you're guarding your heart and mind because you're letting what? Letting the peace of God come into me while I'm dealing with this person. I'm letting the peace of God we mentioned earlier, the peace of God is ruling us and it will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus because we're letting God rule in that situation, in that place where we can lose our peace of mind. We're guarding our peace. We're guarding our heart and mind to not lose it in his presence. Now, number eight, I'm sorry, number eight now, focus on God's love. Focus, focus on God's love is number eight. Isaiah 54:10. Focus on God's love. And, and when we're focusing on God's love, that's a part of what we mentioned earlier. If you, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And those who come to him must believe that he is, that he is the way maker, the, the yoke destroyer. We must believe God is who he says he is. In order to focus on God and feel peace, 5410 says, though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, Yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Now picture that image right there. That's the image all by itself. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, that, mean, that means no matter what kind of chaos is going on around you, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed that means his peace will not be removed from us unless we step out from under it his peace is not going anywhere and nothing in this world can shake his peace unless we we look at the devil we believe the devil we stop trusting the lord see his nothing god puts over us if god puts that shadow of the almighty if god just put that covenant of peace not be shaken Nothing the devil throws in our path is going to shake that covenant of peace. That's why we dwell in the secret place under the shadow of the Almighty. Because nothing the devil can do or any demon from hell can rock that peace. The covenant that God has promised to keep over us. But we've got to commit to stay there. we got to make sure we don't look at the devil. Don't believe the devil. Don't listen to lies. Don't get seduced. Don't get distracted. Those are all lies from the pit of hell. Amen. Amen. And that's also guarding. That's right. It is also guarding. All of this. See, all of these are tied together. These are all tied together of why we got to look and take our peace of mind serious. So when I say, let's, know, let's now go into the presence of the Lord for six minutes. That's why I say no typing on the screen. Everything I'm talking about right now is what should be going on for those six minutes. We're standing in God's presence. That's why if you type on the screen, you're cheating yourself. If you type something on the screen, because you had to step out of God's presence to type. That's why I don't want you to worry about typing a single thing during stillness time. Because it's all about 100% casting out the devil and loving the Lord for six minutes. Amen. Number nine. Soaking. Soaking. Oh, my excuse me. Soaking. I said soaking. I can read my own handwriting. Seeking rest. <laughs> seeking rest in the Lord. Now, this is very similar to seeking peace. We know that if we're seeking rest in the Lord, when you're resting in the Lord, you know that's part of dwelling. That's part of dwelling. We're soaking, realistically, we're soaking in His presence. That's probably, that's probably why soaking came to mind. We're soaking in God's presence, but what we're doing is seeking rest. When we go into stillness, especially when something's been bothering you all day long, bad news, suddenly lost a family member, bad news, backstabbers, liars, cheaters, lose your job, whatever it is. I'm seeking rest. I'm, you know what? I can't take this. I need to go seek peace and I need to seek some rest in the Lord because I'm about to go now to God's secret place. Excuse me. I got to go into the secret place of the Lord right now. I need some peace. So those really go together. Seeking peace 
and seeking rest. The verse that goes to that, Matthew, Matthew 11, 28. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. And we know we've heard this one. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. What does it say first? Come to me. He's already here. We have to come to him. His presence is already around us wherever we go. We are the ones who have to come into his presence because his presence is everywhere. But if we don't come to his presence, you're not going to feel his presence. That's why I said you got to seek a quiet place. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest if you come to me. Verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Thank you, Jesus. When we come into the presence of the Lord, we're seeking rest. And it's like, how, how, how many of you came home from a hard day? I don't know if you got an easy chair or a lounge chair. You ever come home from a hard day at work and you sit back and you put your feet up and go, ah, what a day. Picture that, only you resting in the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord, I couldn't wait to get in your presence. Sit back in my Holy Ghost easy chair. Kick my feet back. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I need this, Lord. Whoo, I need this refreshing. I need this anointing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I had a rough day. Oh, I was about to lose the day, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. See, that's what it is. Your, your yoke, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. He's going to take care of everything we went through. But we got to rest in him. Amen. And finally, number 10, put everything on the altar number 10 put everything 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 on the altar everything let me read like i say with kids everything 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 on the altar not some things partial no no everything every part of your life put it on the altar when you go into stillness when you're in the stillness that's why you go in peace. That's why you're at peace. Everything that's bothering you in your life, you just put it on the altar. That's why you feel the peace. If you're thinking about it, you're not going to be at peace. But when you go into stillness time, you hear me say, Lord, we put everything on the altar, trying to steal my peace, my joy, my faith, my hope. I put it all on the altar. Every single thing that's not like you, I put it on the altar and I'm letting go and let you do what you do best. Cast all my care on you if you care for me. Amen. And that scripture, Philippians, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. We know this verse. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace, number 7, verse 7, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind. See, again, We've got to commit. There it is. In your face, devil. We are the ones. It says, do not be anxious. We are the ones who have to commit to not be anxious. God doesn't make us not be anxious. That's all a part of thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Because if your mind if your mind is stayed on the Lord, you're not being anxious. You're being obedient. Do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything hey lois god bless you do not be anxious about anything say it with me do not be anxious about anything about anything about anything do not be anxious about anything but in every situation say that again every situation every don't leave out anything every situation by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving the reason we're saying with thanksgiving is because when we lift up our prayer and thanksgiving we're giving thanks that it's been delivered. With, with, with that's a part of when I pray, believe I've received it. With everything, present your petitions with thanksgiving, giving thanks. As I lift my petition, thank you, Lord, for delivering me from stress. Thank you, Lord, for taking this this high blood pressure. And thank you, this ulcer, this this insomnia, these this these lonely nights, the depression. Thank you for taking it, Lord. Ooh, ooh, devil, devil working hard trying to devil try to interrupt this message praise god amen amen so that's philippians 4 6 and, <coughs> 4 6 and 7 with thanksgiving that means as we lift it up 
We're thanking him for the deliverance. As we lift it up, thank you for my healing. We're lifting up, I need healing. And as you say, thank you for my healing, you're lifting up healing. And at the same time, you're thanking him for the healing. Thank you for my supernatural provision. Thank you, Lord, for my deliverance. Thank you for my peace of mind. See, as you say it, as you say thank you for whatever the victory is, you're lifting it up and saying thank you at the same time. You're saying thank you in advance, Lord, for my healing. So you're lifting up healing that you need and thanking him for it at the same time. And what follows that? As you do that, number seven, verse seven, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds because you're giving it all to the Lord. And once you give it all to the Lord, that's when the peace comes. If you don't feel peace after you prayed, you didn't give it to the Lord. You just said words. If you feel peace after you pray, that means you really trust God. He's going to help you through it. If you go back to worrying right after you pray, you didn't give God a single thing. You didn't put a single thing on the altar. You just did a fake action, said fake words, and didn't give it to the Lord, and we'll see no results because you didn't put it on the altar. You just said words. No, when we say lay it on the altar, Lord, take this. I take this cup from me right now, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And once you give it to him, you just go in the atmosphere. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my victory. Thank you for my healing. Thank you for my vision. Thank you for my way. Thank you for answering my prayers. Whatever it is, just go into Thanksgiving. Prayers of Thanksgiving, follow your request, and that's when his peace comes on you. Uh, you Amen. That's exactly right. And that's that's when the world, that's right, Mary. And that's why you're looking at the world. When you look at the world, you'll stay worried, tired, and disappointed. That's the key to know what you're looking at. If you stay worried, tired, and uh, disappointed, that means you're comparing your life with the world. And the world will always make you feel worse because the world wants you to feel worse. That's why when you look at God, and that's, that's why it's a commitment. And it's not easy. It is not easy because the devil's trying to put the disappointment, the frustration. Every single negative thought is planted by the devil, especially if he knows you're looking at him more. He's going to put more depression into your life. That's why we don't look at him. As much as we can, you get slapped, I'll keep my mind. You, if you have to say it out loud, I'll keep my mind still on me. Bad news, depression, frustration, keep my mind. I don't, know, I don't care Look what you're hitting with. I'm keeping my mind still on you. I'm keeping my mind still on the Lord. I don't care what you're hitting with, devil. I don't care what you're hitting with, devil. I'm keeping my mind still on you. Hopelessness, keep my mind. Depression, anxiety, frustration, every negative spirit. I don't care what did you what you hit me with. I'm keeping my mind still on the word and still on the Lord. And that's a discipline. That's not easy to do. Discipline means you have to work on it every day. You have to actually work on committing your, your mind to the Lord every day and not look at the world. Because you look at the news, you look at music, you look at movies, you look at TV shows. The world is in our face in every medium. So we've got to commit to protect our eye gate, our ear gate, people, things, things in this world. We have to commit to holding on to all the things we talked about to protect our peace and faith because the world is attacking it 24 7. that's why i say pray without ceasing with in everything give thanks pray without ceasing is we're constantly praying because every time we get hit by a negative thought in this world is trying to steal our peace pray without ceasing and everything give thanks thank you lord for my, protecting me thank you for protecting my thoughts thank you for keeping the negativity out lord we're thanking it constantly because thoughts, our thoughts are going every second of the day. And as much as we can protect every second of the day, we're trying to keep the negative thoughts of the devil out of our mind every second of the day. It's not easy. It's a discipline. A discipline means we have to work on it. Just like you exercise. You don't get a, a, a good body just thinking about, I want to be I want to be in shape. A thought, I want to be in shape. Those are words. No, you got to do something. You got to work on getting in shape. If you're losing weight, you got to work on losing weight. You don't just say, I want to lose weight. Bam, weight's gone. No, you got to eat right, exercise, do aerobics, whatever it is. You have to do something to bring the discipline, the strength. And that goes with our faith. Faith is tested constantly because the devil's trying to pull us back in this world as much as we can. So we just bring it back. Don't take it back. Put it on the altar and leave it there. Amen. And that's the qualities of what all we should be thinking about. When we go into stillness, these 10 steps should be qualities of our peaceful time, our peaceful place. And that's why we have to do it every day. Not some days, even if you can't come to fellowship, spend some part of your day. I, I, I agree that you, you should do, even, even though we do it in fellowship every day, I want you to actually practice 
try to do it some other part of the day just to understand that you can do it by yourself without the fellowship because at times you will be hit by blind sides without being on fellowship and you need to know how to step in god's presence without being on fellowship you you might be 10 hours from now and you get hit by some you get you get hit by something and 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 you got to be able to step into stillness whenever it is because the devil will hit you whenever he can whenever he thinks you're lonely whenever he thinks you're distracted he's going to hit you with whatever he can and when we keep our minds stayed on him the lord jesus christ our savior hey ain't nothing he can do so go way 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 my window father god we thank you lord we thank you for this day, Lord, of this lesson to understand what all we should be thinking about and doing when we're resting in your presence, Lord. All the things that should not be in our presence time, Lord, with you, nothing but our, our focusing on you, Lord, and your love and your power and your victory and your authority that you've given each one of us, Lord. Touch every fellowship member, Lord, because you know what each one of us has been dealing with, Lord. You know what each one of us is dealing with, Lord, before we even pray for it, Lord. So, Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you right now, Father God. We thank you in advance for all the victory and the and the joy that you give us, Lord. In the midst of all the adversity, Lord, you give us the joy to, to hold on. Amen. To let go of the PTSD memories. Those memories that are trying to rock our world, trying to keep us from moving forward in life, Lord. Bring healing to every fellowship member who's battling those negative spirits from the devil, trying to keep those from moving forward and living their life to the fullest, Lord. The devil is a liar. You do not create a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. We must commit, Lord, give each fellowship member strength to capture every stronghold, capture every stronghold, and remove those strongholds that are trying to hold on to keep us from our joy from you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name, Father God. We hold on. We lay everything at, at your feet, Lord. We lay it all at your feet, Father God. We thank you, Lord, right now. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and we give it all to you, Lord, right now. Right now, someone's been watching us the past couple of hours. They hear our praise and our worship and, and see our dedication to the Lord. But you're a visitor. You, you don't even understand how you got to this channel. But the Lord brought you to this channel because you, you're depressed. You're suicidal. You feel like you've lost it all. You feel no reason to live. You feel like giving up on life. And somehow you found yourself on this channel. And that's not an accident. The Lord brought you to this channel to bring healing to your soul and your spirit. And if you don't know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, say this prayer with me right now. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. Oh, yes, Lord. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me and my, my sins and was raised from the dead. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. And I commit right now I would not do a single thing in life and, 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 and do a single thing in life and, and get distracted by a single thing in life without lifting up to you first, Lord. Creating me a clean heart and remove me anything and everything that's not like you. And if you said that prayer sincerely, hallelujah. If you said that prayer sincerely, Holy Spirit will move into your life and bring revelation to you. He'll bring knowledge that you need to understand how to change your life and convict you of the things you're doing that are not in God's will, that should be corrected. And we commit right now, Father God, to touch that new soul and touch every fellowship member, Lord, as we said the lesson, then understand the importance of standing still in your presence, Lord, and truly taking advantage of being in your presence where peace beyond understanding is waiting for us to hear your voice to give us direction guidance protection deliverance in every way lord amen right now i want to bind every spirit of retribution revenge retaliation for coming against anyone in this fellowship because of the participation in this fellowship and i bind the spirits of retribution revenge retaliation and every other demonic spirit named or unnamed it cast you all out of our presence, out of our mind, out of our spirit, out of our home. Back to the pit of hell from which you came in the name of Jesus. And Father God, loose, Lord, loose into the fellowship, unspeakable joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Loose 
peace beyond understanding. That should keep him in perfect peace whose mind is still in you, Lord. Father God, loose reconciliation, Lord. Heal marriages and families that are struggling to survive under attack by the devil, Lord. Heal those marriages and families right now and protect every marriage and family that is not struggling but is still under the attack because the devil does not want any marriage or family unit to survive. Protect them in the name of Jesus, Lord. And Father God, loose restoration, Lord. Restore, restore, restore every area of our lives, Lord. We take back what the devil is stolen right now. We take back our peace of mind, Lord. We take back our zest for living, our health and well-being. We take it back right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Loose, Lord. Loose. Thank you, Jesus. Supernatural healing. 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 By your stripes, we are healed. And we claim victory and healing every single day, Lord. We thank you for our healing. Thank you, Jesus. We speak every day. Thank you, Lord. I believe I've received my healing. I believe I've received. I believe I have received my healing in the name of Jesus. And Father God, loose supernatural overflow provision to every fellowship member who has a financial need, financial breakthrough of any kind, Lord. For we're the head and not the tail. We're blessings flowing in, blessings flowing out. We're blessed. We may be a blessing to others. We're the lender and not the borrower. We're above and not beneath. We are out of debt. All of our needs are met. We have plenty more to put in store. We are children of God. And nothing shall by any means hurt us. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And right now, we pray for Lori's husband right now to bring peace over him right now, who felt unrest during the word because his spirit was being convicted right now, Lord. Bring the peace beyond understanding. And Lord, Lori... Laura's husband right now wherever he is Lord not even understand that peace that overtakes him Lord give him the peace beyond understanding without even knowing what hit him right now in the name of Jesus Lord we ask you that in Jesus name we pray amen and Lord thank you for our miracles Lord thank you for each fellowship member's miracle coming to pass Lord we don't know the when Lord but we already know it is on the way on the way Lord and we thank you right now in advance for each of our miracles Lord we believe it, we see it, we believe it, we receive it to our heart, we expect it, and by faith, we walk in it, knowing each day that we wake up could be the day of the manifestation of our miracle. So we say thank you, Jesus, every single day, because that could be the day of our breakthrough. That could be the day of our supernatural healing, deliverance. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Father God, thank you, Lord.